obviously you've had experience you know, the last few years you know, being a backup quarterback. How do you kind of prepare yourself? I know it's kind of a cliche, you know, always prepare yeah. to start it, but how, how, what goes into making sure that you're ready if, if you are called upon? Yeah, I mean, fortunately for me, I've been a backup in this offense for a long time, so I've gotten a ton of reps over the years, and there's not really ever a play that is called that I haven't run at some point. So obviously when I'm not out there practicing, I'm taking mental reps. But at this point, after playing for Josh for, I don't know, six years, it's like <clears throat> when he calls a play, I'm at the point where I've run it at some point. It might have been five years ago. It might have been last week. But there's not really much that gets called that would surprise me. There's also maybe it's an assumption that, that you know part of your job is to also help sure. a younger player get ready. Is yeah. that something that you um, are good with and embrace? Yeah, for sure. Definitely at this point in my career, um, with Aiden and Chase, I mean, <clears throat> it's my job to impart the wisdom that I've learned playing this this game, and then obviously playing in this offense for an extended period amount of time to to help those guys out. So, you know, I'm always looking for them to you know at them to say, hey, try this, or you know, put your feet this way, or whatever it might be. And then <clears throat> when it comes to the meeting room, they both do a great job of asking questions, really good questions, and um, you know, so definitely part of. My responsibility is to help those guys out too. If at some point, um, and you knock on wood, of course, but they get called on, and or, or the quarterback goes down, and it turns to them, and they're ready to step up and do the job. Does that give you some satisfaction? I mean, look, we all, this is a team game. We all, no matter who's out there, we want those those people to do well. And so, if I can help them, you know, catch up to speed a little bit faster with with what I've learned, I think a lot of t the thing in this league is if you can learn from other people's mistakes, that's a big thing. Like if you can see someone mess up and say, well, okay, I see where he messed up. I'm going to learn from that and not repeat that mistake. <clears throat> it's not about just the mistakes you make. If you're only worried about the mistakes you make and you're missing all the other stuff. So look, I've made a lot of mistakes over the last six years. And so if I can impart that wisdom to them and say, hey, you know, when it's this coverage, don't be thinking over here, look over here. Or, you know, versus this defense, you got to run left instead of right. Whatever it might be, um, you know, I try to help those guys as much as I can. Brian, at this stage in your career, how much fun are you having? And also, what are some of the little things that, you know, are day by day that still makes this enjoyable for you? Uh, I think the guys, the people that you're in there with, you know, the grind of, of going through training camp together. I mean, it's funny when you talk. I'm getting to the point now where a lot of my old teammates are retired. So you ask them, like, what do you miss? And it's the same things that I think that I'll miss when I'm done is, is you know, going out there with your guys and, you know, sweating and bleeding and, and grinding through it. And really, it's it's just you out there. It's it's you and the guys. I mean, the coaches are out there, too, but you're going through that struggle together. And, and so, you know, when I talk to those people, it's like they miss the guys. You know, obviously, you miss the games, but we're a long ways away from that. And so you have to embrace training camp. You have to embrace, you know, going through those grinder practices, um, you know, when it's hot. I mean, we've been lucky the last two days, but... It's um, it's that camaraderie. It's what you build, you know, during this time of the year. Brian, what do you think the, the key has been for you um, going into year fifteen with the longevity that you've had in, in your career? Um, I mean, I think you know, I just try to go out there, work hard, learn, um, execute the best I can. Um, you know, I've dealt with some injuries, but you you recover from that, and then you got to try to take care of your body, try to do the best things you can to, you know, be available. I think we always talk about availability is almost more important than ability. And if you're out there, you always have a chance. If you're out there practicing, you have a chance to compete. You have a chance to be on the field. And, you know, so I've taken that from a lot of guys that I've learned from, how to stay on the field, how to how to be on the team, and, and then you just go from there. You've been on a lot of rosters, not just in New England, but in other places with some really good players. Yeah. When you look around at all the talent on this offense, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the opportunity's priceless, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, <clears throat> when you look at, obviously, all the skill group, whether it's Devontae, Adjacoby, Hunter, um, Philip Dorsett, a guy I play with back in New England. I mean, he's he's running faster than I've ever seen him run. You look at the, the young tight ends. Obviously, Hooper, a lot of experience. Michael Mayer really coming along. Obviously, had a great college career. And then the running backs. I mean, each one's a little different, and they all bring something different to, to the offense. And so it's been fun for me to learn to – uh, you know, work with those guys. Obviously, I got a lot of work in the spring and throwing to Devontae. I mean, trust me, that's you ask what's what's fun in training camp. Throwing to 17 is always fun. All right. I know it's only been a few months, but what have been some of your impressions of Aiden O'Connell specifically? Aiden? Yeah, he's done a great job. I mean, this is not an easy offense to learn, especially as a young guy. I mean, I got to watch Mac Jones, you know, run it two years ago. As a, and Really, I mean, that was that was impressive. And Aiden's doing a good job, too, of coming in as a rookie. They throw a lot at you, and then you have to try to retain it. So 
he's done a really good job of learning it. Um, you know, he's not making a lot of mental mistakes, which early on, I mean, look, when I was a rookie, I mean, you're swimming at some point. So he's done a great job of kind of staying on schedule and he does a great job. He's throwing the ball really well. How different is Josh the head coach from Josh the offensive coordinator? Not very different. How appealing was it, though, to get back with him? I know he's somebody that yeah. you were fond of as a human and a friend. Yep. So what did that mean to be back and look across and see all these people and see and everybody? Yeah. I mean, look, when, when I got released from New England, um, there was only one place that I was going to play, and that was for Josh. I mean, I wasn't going to go learn a new system, learn you know a new verbiage. Um, <clears throat> so when the opportunity presented itself, it was something that I didn't want to pass up. Um, He's a great leader, and not just with him, but the, the staff that I've worked with before that are out here are all guys that I love and, and have gone to battle with and, and been in you know those, those tough situations. And, and there's no people I trust more than, than Josh and Bo and Mick and Carmen and Jerry. I mean, those are all guys that, you know, <clears throat> you, you talk about, like, what are you going to miss? It's the time with, with coaches like that where you learn so much. They, they open your eyes to so much. So, you know, I just feel fortunate the opportunity came up. How much is a lot of work in the spring, and now with Jamie's minutes being managed, the extra work you're getting in the camp, how valuable is that in case you are falling on the seat? Yeah, I mean, look, as a backup, you know, you may get a lot of reps. You may not get any. So the, the ones that you get, it's it's always, you know, you just keep stacking them up and use those as, as uh, you know, a, a, a building block. So that way, if you ever do play, you know, you're going out with there with more reps. Was that a teachable moment today in camp with Jimmy all of a sudden not being out there, then you getting the reps and closing out the practice, kind of getting used to a quarterback that could just be thrown in there at any second? Yeah, I mean, look, I've been in practices before in New England where it's the middle of the practice and I wasn't supposed to practice and he throws you in there. I mean, it's about keeping yourself on, on your toes and always being ready to go and not just for me, but then Aiden's getting more reps. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's something that, look, we're players. When they tell us to go in the game, you go play. So you never know when that might be. I've been in preseason games before in, in New England where, you know, it's second down and four, and all of a sudden my, hud- my helmet comes on, Hoyer, you're in the game. Go in for one play, come back out. Like, I mean, it's, it's, that's part of the job. I don't think your paths crossed with Jimmy G. No, we were. Yeah, kind of. We were on opposite flights. Right, exactly. <laughs> Traded, right? Yeah. Um, but what are your impressions of, uh, of, of Jimmy Jimmy's cool. I mean, he's a great leader. He's like, when I say cool, like cool, calm, collected, always, you know, under control. I think I've always said like the greatest trait for a quarterback is just to stay even keel. You don't get too high. You don't get too low. I think he's a definition of that. Um, He's played a lot of great football and I think the guys respect him and that's a huge part of playing quarterback. Brian, going back to covering you, even in high school at San Ignatius, Mm -hmm. you were that way, just kind of one level play. How do you teach that to an Aiden and a Chase? Um, you know, I think it just, you, you realize like, just like in life, the next day comes. So in football, the next play comes, it doesn't matter if the one before was good, bad, ugly, whatever it might be, like, you're going to have to go and play that next play. And if you get too emotional about the one before it's starting to to affect you on the next one. And and I always thought about, you know, in high school, I was a a pitcher in baseball. And so like, if you give up a home run in in baseball, like there's another hitter coming to, to face you out there. And you have to have that mentality, like, Whatever happens, happens. Whether it's good, bad, whatever it might be, you have to go play that next play. And so I think that comes with time. I think that comes with repetition. And I think that comes with, in all reality, playing playing in real games. You're talking about how much fun it is to play with Devontae Adams. You've had a lot of great receivers throughout your career. What is it about Devontae Adams that makes him a little different than those guys? I mean, he's explosive. He's big. He's fast. His hands are incredible. I mean, <clears throat> There's not many people where you go out there and you say, if I just put it in this radius, he's probably going to catch it. I mean, a 50-50 ball for a lot of receivers is probably an 80-20 for him. And to have that type of confidence in a guy is always something great. And like I said, you, for me in the spring, get to experiment with different types of throws. How can I throw him on this route? How is he going to run this route? And so he's, he's creative. He's super intelligent. And... Um, I mean, like I said, when, when you look over there and 17's out there and you have a chance to throw it to him, it's not something you want to pass up. How much uh, thought do you put in your shoe selection and do you have a favorite pair? <laughs> um, you know, I, as I've gotten older, I've had to take care of my feet a lot more, so I'm always kind of experimenting. I actually have a guy who makes some custom turf shoes for me, and um, it's something that's really helped me really since I was in San Francisco. It was actually Kyle Shanahan's idea because he's always talking about having a good base underneath you. And he goes, if you can wear turf shoes on grass and keep your base underneath you, that means you're, you're always in a good position to throw. And it's just something I've taken with me. Uh, I think it, it forces me not to overextend, overstride. But also, you know, it's a little more cushion instead of, 
you know, all these hard cleats all the time. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Yep. Is this thing on? Yep. Yeah, we're going. Right. Most importantly, uh, Jakob said Dean's on post is actually okay. Oh, I have a text of him saying that too. He sent me a text, and I was like, anytime you talk trash on Twitter, I'm gonna post it. <laughs> and so I, I've been waiting for it. And the fact that he wanted to say that now, I think he's trying to soften the blow. But no, don't worry. He's gonna. It's gonna be a time where he tries. Like he tries to talk to smack. I'm gonna bring that up and just expose him. Man, I know obviously you're locked in uh, competing that right tackle. Um, you know, I know that's something you've been familiar with throughout your career. But what's kind of your mindset going into this year? I know last year. You, know, you kind of talked about you know going back and forth between positions, but you mm-hmm. uh, make a name for yourself at right tackle. How's how's that kind of come to fruition for you? Yeah, um, it's been dope. This is the first training camp in my career. I've been able to come in as a starter, um, but then you know that adds more pressure. You know, you got to be in like in this camp. It's more about solidifying my spot than it is earning it. But then also, you know, we have talented guys in the room: Thayer, Brandon, even Justin. You know, a lot of them can play right tackle also. So. It's more about, you know, improving every day myself and solidifying my spot, but then also finding ways to get better. And, you know, I go against Max every single day, and, you know, Koontz is developing. He's getting better and better, and I'm excited to go against Tyree whenever that is. And, you know, so that's what it's really about this year. More so not really, you know, hanging on to last year because that was last year. That was 2022. This year is a brand new year. It's a new challenge, and... You know, with that challenge comes a lot of people on the face. But first of all, it starts with camping, just to let find my spot. With that being said, what's it like having continuity with the guys as you're playing alongside last year, coming back, pretty much that full group back? Yeah, it's dope. Um, you know, playing next to bars is a certain way I like to play. And having him next to me, he knows how I like to play. And like, you know, whether it's setting a five technique or how I am on a deuce block or how I'm on like a backside cutoff, you know, there's certain ways I like to do things. And having him knowing what I like to do makes it way easier. So it's less communication because you trust the guy next to you. So you talk about the different mindset entering camp, you know, as somebody who's returning from last year in that position. Was the offseason different? Did you have a different mentality in the offseason, uh, being that this is kind of a different year for you? I think this offseason was more so healing because last year was my first year starting with 17 games and I got pretty banged up and I, I mean I've been banged up my entire career so it's more so just you know recovering and then also trying to maintain my fitness and keeping my weight up which I did and trying to maintain my strength. Talking about what you did this offseason also you know you got married you uh, did a you know, football camp in London things like that and what were some things that you feel like attributed to the mental health and healing this offseason? Definitely going back to England you know that's something I've been trying to plan for let's say six years now and going back there and being able to host a camp on the same field I actually started playing football and was an amazing experience but then also the fact that let's say about 90 percent of those kids had never played football before and being able to introduce them to the sport and you know put a smile on their face and just let them be out there and being kids it was amazing and also um Going back home, seeing my friends and my family, I got to see some guys I went to school with 14 years ago, and that definitely it hit, it hit different because it showed me how far I've come and how far I've left to go, and it just made me want to be successful in this sport even more, so I can bring it back over there on a bigger platform. And I had about 55 kids in my camp this year. Hopefully next year I plan to have around let's say 150 to 200, and then do it in multiple locations in England. So. Growing that, that's a huge thing for me mentally because that's one thing I'm really passionate about. And I feel like in this game, you can get stressed about the little things. And if you don't find something to somewhat help relieve your stress, then it will just consume you. And going back to England was one of the things that helped just, you know, mellow me out and really put my mind where it needed to be and give me the motivation I needed going into the season. How long have it been since you've been back? So I went back my rookie year uh, when I was in Baltimore. But I didn't really get to, you know, go around London and go back home and just go and see some of my friends because, you know, we were real busy with the season. And when I went there, it was just a media bombardment where I just had to do multiple things over there because it was my first time going back in a while. So really, this was my first time going back in, let's say, 14 years, like truly going back and being able to just do what I want to do. So it's been a while. And what were those emotions like? I know you posted like the flats that you grew up in, right? Mm-hmm. And to see where you are now, where the city you're in now, like what were those emotions like? Um, it was real surreal. You know, when you, you know, for me leaving England, I had a mission and a goal, and I was real determined to achieve that. And I'm still on the road to achieving what I truly want to, you know, um, 
you know, at my, what I want to happen. And just going back and seeing where I used to live and where I used to play and, you know, the streets I used to walk, it was, it, like I said, it was real surreal. It, it definitely hit different because, you know, when you're that young, you don't really expect that the goals you have that young to come true when you're older. And, you know, although I wanted to play in the NFL, I definitely had no idea how I was going to make it happen. And as a kid, everyone has dreams. You know, I'm sure some kids want to be astronauts, some kids want to be firefighters, some kids want to be pro English football players or soccer players, as they say in America. I'm, I'm saying English football players not because I went back there and I have to say it. Um, you know, everyone has dreams and aspirations at that age, but you don't really know how to achieve them. And, you know, along the way, you have to have help. And I had so much help growing up to get to where I'm at now. And it made me think about all of that, all the help I've had along the way, all the people that really, truly believed in me and all the people that have sacrificed a lot of things to help me get here. And that's kind of what this season for, you know, all those people who were truly believed in me and helped me get here. You know, I want to just go out there and just dominate this year for them and truly show my appreciation for them helping me get here. Right, you talked about the challenges of sometimes sweating the small stuff. And, you know, today is with social media, everyone's a film expert, there's pro football focus, there's all grading systems and everything mm -hmm. like that. So it feels like it's always out there mm -hmm. and it's always prevalent. Um, do you feel like you're doing better in that regard of, of dealing with that or do you just not care anymore about it? Um, I think I'm doing better. You know, the first couple of seasons in the NFL, I kind of let that affect me, especially in New England um, during the COVID year when I had to move to left tackle. You know, I was dealing with some things mentally and physically, so I wasn't in the right place and you know, in that state of mind, it only takes one thing to really, you know, knock you off your, you know, off your seat and really affect you. And, you know, that was a really bad year for me mentally. And so I've learned from that. And then I also have people here, you know, Daryl, he is um, one of the new, he's on staff here. He was with me in New England and he helped me get through a lot of things there mentally. And I mean a lot of things. And to have a guy like that here is that's huge for me and huge for a lot of guys because this sport can take a toll on you on the field and off the field. And I tell a lot of the young guys, you know, you got to have some sort of release when you get home. You can't truly, you know, everyone says you got to focus on football 100 percent. You got to give everything you have to this sport. If you do that, it's going to consume you. And, you know, I tell the young guys because I went through it. You know, I let this sport consume me. I let social media just destroy me from the inside out and mentally put me in the worst state I've ever been in. And so I tell them, you know, don't look at social media. People are going to say what they're going to say. It doesn't really matter if you flip scripts. They definitely couldn't do what you're doing. And, you know, you just go out there and just play ball and have fun because if you're doing that, you're going to be the best you. And if you're the best you, you're going to do your thing on the field. And then all those people talking neg uh, negative about you are going to be, you know, just saying a bunch of positive things about you. By that point, who really cares? You know, it's just words on the, your phone. And it took a while for me to get to that state of mind and that mentality. But I truly feel like this year I really have a – you know, a grip on that. That said, was there some vindication last year, at the end of last year, when mm -hmm. you looked there and your name was pretty prominent on Pro Football Focus? Mm -hmm. the Raiders offensive line, I think, finished number 10 by Pro Football Focus. So do you oh. feel, was there some vindication for you guys? Um, Yes, but no. You know, we definitely, it was cool having Josh and him be a leader in Russia in the NFL, but it also puts a target on your back because now if we don't play up to that standard, and not even playing up to that standard. We want to play higher than that standard. We want to be one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. You know, we're returning to a five starters. And we want to take that next step and truly be one of the lines that everyone talks about. And I feel like some people will really just let all the things on social media get to their head. And that's just a recipe for disaster. If you go out there and you're like, oh, you know, Pro Football Focus is the same with that. We're this or we're that. You know, me and Colton are this and Jerry is that. You know, if you really look into that and let that, you know, you know, blow your head up, you'll go out there and you get smacked in the mouth week one, and, you know, all those ratings and everything will just go away. Jermaine, Carmen is a guy that you guys, I mean, you respect him and you like him. I'm just curious. He can be a coach to chew you out and then turn around laughing with you and joking with you. What is it about his dynamic with you in particular in, in the offensive line, please? I think that, you know, the position we play, it's a lot of moving parts is, you know, one time you're blocking a five, then you're blocking a four ride, then you have to go out and block the safety if he's blitzing on the edge. Like, there's so much that you have to do in this position that sometimes in the heat of the battle, you can just, you know, overreact to some things. You know, if he's shouting at you, you say something back, and then, you know, just having that relationship with him where it's like we get off from the sideline, we're like, yeah, you know, we're good. You know, we just let, you know, just let bygones be bygones, just move on. You know, it's kind of like having a next play mentality. You know, when, you know, things are said, you just let them go because at the end of the day, you know, you don't truly mean them. You know, we have a relationship off the field. I've known Calm for 
five years now, and he was one of the first people I told that I'm having a kid. And, you know, just that relationship I've built with Carmen over the years, because I was with him in New England when I was going through all the, you know, like I said, the mental stuff of this game. And, um, you know, he's been with me through everything. And, you know, at times on the field, it can look like we're just fighting and arguing. But at the same time, we both want the same. Like, we have both have the same goal in mind. We both have a high standard, a really high standard for the way we want to play the game here. And we both know what we want. So, you know, just heads are going to clash in this game. But at the end of the day, we know what it is. Uh, continuity as there is uh, up front with you guys. There's a lot less behind you, especially uh, without Josh here in training camp. You guys paved the way for so many yards last year. Uh, so what's it like blocking for Zamir? What, what have you seen out of him? Yeah, um, you know, I talk to him all the time. He is a hell of a back. It's kind of, I don't think anyone's like Josh in the league. I think Josh is one of a kind, and I can't wait to get him back. But Zeus is definitely a guy, you know, we're lucky to have him because like him and Josh are two different guys. Josh can run you over or juke you out. Zamir's just gonna run head first and run you over. He doesn't care. It's like and it's cool playing for guys like that because you know if you open up a hole and he gets to the safety, nine times out of ten he's gonna run him over and score. So, you know, like I said, Josh is there's no one like him. But we're lucky to have a guy like Zeus and even the other backs too, like Brandon, Amir, Britt. You know, a lot of them bring something else to the game. And you know, like we always say, like like Josh always says, it's next to man up mentality. You know, you can't let one guy not being here affect the way you play out there. And, you you know, we got to keep going. And, you know, like I said, I hope we get him back, and I can't wait to get him back because it will just add on to this offense that we have here. You know, going through what you went through in New England and getting past it, and a lot of people were helping you out. Do you remember a time when you kind of turned the corner where you felt better? Or is it just having success on the field that does that? Um, if I'm being honest, it's probably the Jets game, the last game of the season. You know, I I went through a lot that year, like I said, a lot. And the Jets game, you know, like I said, when I spoke to – I was able to talk to Daryl that year well, up before that game, and he really, you know, pulled me from, you know, off the cliff and, like, mentally just helped me reset. And the Jets game that year was truly the first game where I felt myself. You know, it was a long year. The COVID year kind of sucked, and, you know, there's no fans, and you're dealing with a lot of different things. I was dealing with injuries. Um you know, not being able to play the position I wanted to play, having to switch over the left tackle. But the Jets game that year was truly the first game I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulder, and I had a lot of people to thank for that. I know you've, from time to time, pushed back on, on social media or bitten back a little bit. Here mm-hmm. there. So, what kind of discipline does it take not to just, you know, really? Yeah. Um, it takes a lot, you know, definitely because I don't like some fans out there. I can't name the teams, but I just don't like their fans. Um and so, you know, some of them just try to bait me. And, you know, I'll be writing something on Twitter, and then I'm like, ah, I should, probably shouldn't say that because I know I'm going to hear about it next day, you know, because we have spies on Twitter. I'm not going to say where. Yeah, oh, that's, there's a lot of spies on Twitter. So, you know, I have to really hold my tongue. And, you know, I have a lot of drives. Let's say that. I have a lot of – I made I made a couple of bookmarks last year, too. Of some That was on um, – what was it? It was 2021 when the Chargers – I think we lost that first game. And they sent out that stupid tweet about um, like the like the crying emoji. I don't know what it was. And then when we beat them, you know, I said something back and it blew up. I kind of don't. I you know sometimes I forget how much power players have on social media with the fans. And if you say one little thing, it can turn into something huge. And you know sometimes I I forget that, but most times I remember that because I like to really stir the pot. But I kind of like I said, I've I've cooled down a little bit. Especially since I'm about to have a kid, so I gotta set a good example. But you know, then I gotta have Twitter for a while, so I, mean, I still have a little bit of time left to have fun. Thank you. What's up, Malcolm? We were talking to some of the other players and last year. It, it seemed like there was a lot of learning going on, but this year it seems like guys are having fun. They're enjoying camp, maybe because you have a year of the system underneath it. Do you see that? Oh, yeah, definitely. I definitely feel like we're way more comfortable and definitely feel like we know what we're doing and stuff like that. How was sort of the focus for yourself this offseason? I mean, trying to just trying to be team better team. than I was last year. That's it. I'm just competing with myself. That's it. And what are some things in particular that you thought from last year that you needed to improve on? Just all around. Just all around trying to be a better player in every sense, even the things I was good at. Trying to get better at that, things I was bad at. Do you feel better, I guess, now, uh, with or more comfortable with where you are and everything than you were last year at this time? Is that did you accomplish, I guess, what you wanted to? Yeah, definitely. 
Uh, I think definitely last year, brand new system. After going from uh, a different system my rookie year, so it's my second year in the same system, so I definitely feel way more comfortable than I was. So, What, what do you think is the keys to this defense having success? Uh, just playing our game, that's it. Thank you.